All right, so this one we're going to go through the labs of Gmail. A really nice feature of Gmail is some built-in tools that other people make. So first off, I'm going to go back into the settings area. Open up the hood of Gmail and it comes on to the general tab here. We're going to move across the top here and go to labs. Depending upon your resolution, it might fall down to the next line or might be all the way at the top. So these are experimental stuff that other people have made to create it to help uh, work with Gmail a little bit better. Some tools, or excuse me, some of the ones I have on um, and we kind of recommend um, is canned responses. This is a nice tool, so you want to put it uh, enabled on. This is all alphabetical, so if you go down to the C's, you'll see canned responses. You want to turn that one on. What that does for you is if you're always answering the same email from somebody, um, it allows you to put in predefined text for you. So for example, are we had to block our students' uh, wallpaper on their Chromebooks this year due to some inappropriate um, images on them, and we wiped out their desktops and we got a lot of emails about that. We since the, opened that up too as well. Um, so the canned response that I had was called wallpaper blocked. So you notice it's down here. I'll pop this out for you. It's down here in this little triangle. Once you enable canned responses, this will be available to you. And then you can click wallpaper blocked, for instance. So I could change Julian's name into Julie. And basically what that does is give me a predefined email already typed up and then I can hit send for them. It's pretty simple to set up. All you do is you compose an email and I'll just call this test CR number three. And I could write in, hello, you know, thank you for your email. I know I spelled that wrong. I'll get back to you as soon as possible, blah, blah, blah. And once I'm done composing it, what I do want to do is get rid of my signature because when I use a canned response, it will bring in the signature and you already have your signature in a composed message. So I don't want that in there twice. So if I go to canned response, notice there's an insert area and down below here, there's a saved area. And then down below here is a delete area. So this is where I can delete my canned responses. This is where I can create a new canned response. Notice it picks up the subject that you typed in. You could call it anything you wanted to there, and I hit OK. So the next time when I have to answer the same email from somebody or send out an email that's similar, I can go to canned responses and go to the insert area, make sure you're the insert area, and there's test canned response number three, and it brings in that email. You could have images, links, or anything in canned responses. A really nice tool when you know you're going to be answering the same question from many different people. So you have to enable this uh, lab. Um, go down and hit save before it's available in the compose menu down at the bottom right. Another one we'd like to use is the Google Calendar gadget. What this does for you is it basically loads your little Google Calendar as a little widget over here on the left hand side um, so that you're able to see um, what you have coming up uh, on your calendar. So if I'm in somewhere and Rick Lappy here asked me for a meeting, I can quickly gaze through my little calendar gadget here. There are some options here. You also can hop to today. So if you scroll, you know, way back into the summer and you're like, okay, what's today? It takes you back to today. You can even add a quick appointment here, which is kind of nice. You can actually just talk like English and it'll add it right into your appointment as an appointment event on a calendar. And underneath options is how you can see different calendars. So I'm looking at my personal calendar and my school district calendar, but I can also turn on uh, one of the tech coaches, Dan Kaufman or, or Rick Lappy's uh, calendar as well. Um, by doing that then, now I can see their um, calendars as well as mine. Um, so I don't wanna see that. So basically then I can disable those things. by unselecting them here. And I will not see there are two calendars in my little calendar gadget. Another one underneath settings labs that you might be interested in using is Google Maps. So if I go to labs again underneath Google, remember this is alphabetical, there's a Google Calendar gadget that's talked about. Google Maps, enable that. If someone sends you an address, it'll give you a link to a Google Map automatically. Um, most people in Outlook love the preview pane one, so you want to enable that, and I'll show you that in a moment. And the last one we recommend is the unread messages icon. You can enable that. There are some other ones back here, but we don't really feel much use for them. So when you hit save changes, it should bring you back to the inbox. Um, so that preview pane allows you to look at Gmail instead of a long list of emails 
um, that most people aren't familiar with. In Outlook, you get this little drop down arrow now to say vertical split. So now when I uh, click on an email, I can see it on the right hand side rather than just a long list of emails. Some people, no, I, I would say probably no one that I know, um, never really uses the horizontal split. Uh, it seems most people do like that vertical split where you get to see an email on the side as, as well as your list of emails. That's basically the gadgets that we turn on from labs. Um, so hopefully this helps you out. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or concerns.